Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz, and today I'm the very detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about showers and storms expected to develop across parts of central Queensland, extending into the southeast of Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales this week. We'll give a tropical weather update as well and talk about what's expected up there. A heatwave forecast for WA, some warm temperatures do extend across parts of the state. I'll give a general weather forecast for some of the southern states as well. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do thank you for doing so in advance. Now heading over into south central Queensland where we do have some showers and storms expected to develop across parts of the state later on this week. Now I'm going to break those down for you in greater detail right now. Uh, they're not going to be anything like those uh, that severe thunderstorm outbreak that we did see the last couple of days. That was really powerful indeed and those thunderstorms that we're expecting to see over the coming couple of days aren't going to be anywhere near as strong. So throughout the course of this week you can see Sunday afternoon we do see a little band of showers and uh, low pressure just slowly start to develop across parts of the Queensland and that's going to be the precursor for this uh, weather event where we're going to see those severe thunderstorms develop across parts of south uh, south central Queensland. Now this rainfall here is certainly not going to be heavy and there's barely any action in terms of thunderstorms embedded in it either even though it is moving over a very favourable air mass through Tambo and Charleville it seems to save all of the energy for these thunderstorms which do begin to fire up by Monday morning into early Monday afternoon. We see two areas of thunderstorms develop across parts of south central Queensland one into the southeast outside of Toowoomba and Warwick along the New South Wales and Queensland border and one in the typical areas where we see these thunderstorms develop outside of Roma and in June towards the east of Charleville. These thunderstorm bands develop separately to each other. The one in uh, the southeastern corner of Queensland is expected to really develop in the late morning hours and into the early afternoon hours and there is a chance of potentially severe thunderstorms developing there by around midday or just after uh, outside of Toowoomba with the risk of heavy rainfall damaging winds, large hailstones and even some uh, twisters as well. Just considering the favourable environment for these thunderstorms, the risk that low risk of tornadoes but again nothing to be panicking about it's not going to be favorable enough to produce damaging ones or anything it just could produce some very strong uh, uh, swirly uh, straight line damaging winds for some locations specifically outside of the Toowoomba and Warwick sort of area outside to, uh, out towards Dolby some heavy falls also possible out towards Injun and Roma towards the east of Charleville we're expecting some good rainfall to develop out there severe thunderstorms look possible but they don't really look likely on this forecast here a couple will fire up I reckon outside of uh, in June, specifically towards the northeast of Charleville, up towards uh, Rolleston and Emerald, a couple of severe storms are possible there. But again, I really don't think that they're going to be too likely. And these thunderstorms fire down by around 5 or 6 p.m. as well, so they're not going to continue late on into the night. They will upscale into what will probably eventually become a squall line or a very broken squall line extending between Tambo across towards uh, some of the places along the Sunshine Coast, north of Kingaroy and through Gympie, uh, up towards Rolleston to Room, and even as far north as Emerald, a couple of showers are expected there but these thunderstorms really quickly pipe down I mean you can see this this is only at 7 30 or 8 p.m at night you can see these thunderstorms really starting to weaken off now and very little rainfall is expected to make it further towards the coastline around Bundaberg, Agnes Water and Rockhampton and even though they did receive some good rainfall over the last couple of days from those storm fronts that moved through some more rainfall would be very much welcome there and unfortunately for residents along the central Queensland coastline I have some bad news it's not going to be coming from this thunderstorm event on Monday the rainfall is going to be much more further inland and it's also likely to be a lot lighter than usual as well. Still though, there will be some places picking up some good rainfall accumulations, especially around that in June Roma and then towards the south e uh, southwest rather of Rolleston, some good falls are possible up towards 60 or 70 millimetres under the right thunderstorm, but again it's going to be very hit and miss, and widespread rainfall accumulations between 5 to 15 millimetres look to be much more of the norm but even then they're going to be so hit and miss for some locations. Some places will pick up nothing, and some places might pick up double or triple the number that I've just thrown around around. So we will keep a close eye on things on these thunderstorms here. It's a very difficult forecast to make. Further into the southeast of Queensland, a couple of showers and storms expected north of the Brisbane area and up towards Marichidor, Caloundra or Noosa. But those thunderstorms there are going to be pretty hit and miss and pretty weak as well. Brisbane and the Gold Coast expecting pretty much nothing. A round of thunderstorms expected across the border from New South Wales into southeastern Queensland as well later on Monday night and bringing a couple of light showers towards the uh, western suburbs of Brisbane and up towards Toowoomba. A bit 
of a second round of thunderstorms, if you like, from the ones in the afternoon hours, but really nothing uh, extreme there either. Definitely nothing severe, that's for sure. Severe storms are possible into the northeast of New South Wales, though, in the late afternoon and evening hours, specifically around the Moree and Lightning Ridge sort of area. And then another spot is expected outside of Grafton, but I would not be getting your hopes up for severe thunderstorms there. They do look to be pretty uh, weak as well on the forecast, and there's not too much model support for severe thunderstorms now on this forecast. The conditions will be there. There's going to be a lot of instability in the atmosphere. What I would class as sort of moderate to the early range of high values outside of Injune specifically and Roma, some good values of convective available potential energy. But I just reckon there's going to be a little bit too much cold air for these severe thunderstorms to really fire up. And I think the air also might be too dry for those nasty severe thunderstorms to take a hold where we've got those large hailstones and tornadoes. It is storm season though, so anything can happen across the southeast and the central parts of Queensland. We will keep a very close eye on things, but right now, uh, really severe thunderstorms, really nasty thunderstorms do not look likely on the forecast. And in fact, they don't even look possible on the forecast. The chance of severe thunderstorms is there, yes, but for the most part, these thunderstorms are just going to be stock standard thunderstorms for parts of central Queensland, so nothing worth worrying about at this time. And then later on next week as well, Thursday and Friday, we're expecting another energy ball to get itself over parts of Queensland from this low pressure system and this low pressure trough, extending up towards uh, northwestern Queensland. That's going to promote a line of thunderstorms to develop across parts of inland Queensland as well. But the forecast on this one is very uncertain at this time. Still a lot of details need to be ironed out by the forecast models to really see what is expected from this forecast here. But what we can say for certain at this time is an outbreak of thunderstorms, most likely pulse thunderstorms at this time, is expected to develop at around 2 or 3 p.m. local time outside of the Injun, Rolleston, Roma area, extending up towards Jericho, Emerald and Claremont. And a couple of thunderstorms even extending up into the central northern Queensland coastline towards Mackay and Charters Towers, a few thunderstorms storms expected there. The central Queensland coastline between Ogmore and Agnes Water could also receive a couple of thunderstorms uh, earlier on in the afternoon before a line of thunderstorms develops between uh, Claremont right down towards Toowoomba uh, along sort of this line that I'm tracing out with the cursor right now. You can see a line of thunderstorms, a very fragmented line, but albeit a line of thunderstorms expected to develop in the afternoon and the late evening from the remnants of the pulse thunderstorms that will fire up in the early afternoon and that will extend further towards the coastline where a couple of showers are possible but not awfully likely at this time. Into the southeast of Queensland as well, Friday morning and into early Friday afternoon, a couple of showers and storms also possible there, and into the more central parts of Queensland, up towards the Capricorna district between uh, sort of Harvey Bay, Bundaberg, Agnes Water, and up towards Rockhampton. Some rainfall is expected there with some embedded thunderstorms also possible. So a little bit of rainfall certainly will not go astray in the central Queensland area. It looks to be about 50 or 60 millimetres inbound for about late Friday morning and into early Friday afternoon, so we certainly won't be shrugging that off, that's for sure certainly something worth talking about and certainly something a lot of people are uh, very excited for. I could imagine in central Queensland this rainfall really beginning to pipe up there but that does peter out by Friday evening and it really doesn't look to be too widespread at all. You can see rainfall accumulations however on Thursday and Friday expected to be pretty good across parts of Queensland. We are saying up towards 50 millimetres outside of Rockhampton and yeah that's exactly what the forecast models are saying as well. Some good falls down the Sunshine Coast as well. Outside of Toowoomba peak rainfall accumulations look to be at around that 80 millimeter mark and that will most likely be from thunderstorms the majority of that will come through from a series of thunderstorms expected to, to develop in the afternoon and evening hours but that basically does it for southern queensland there really isn't too much else to be talking about the showers continuing through friday but saturday and sunday next weekend look to have a little bit of break from uh, thunderstorms, certainly a break from severe weather before they pipe up again on Monday afternoon by the looks of things across parts of Queensland. And this just looks like another outbreak is inbound for the early parts of next fortnight. But I'll keep you guys updated on that. Right now, it's still too early to tell. In terms of showers and storms of the northeast of New South Wales, there are a few expected. You can see Monday afternoon, a few showers and storms expected to develop across parts of northeastern New South Wales. And then through Wednesday and Thursday, a couple of showers and storms expected to develop further down the coastline. Some showers expected throughout parts to the west coast of New, uh, the east coast rather of New South Wales, extending down towards Sydney, and showers are firing up pretty consistently north of Newcastle, where a few severe thunderstorms are possible at this time. But the forecast still pretty uncertain uh, to make some final calls on what we're actually expecting. Storms continuing through Friday morning, but then a break this uh, next weekend, and then so those storms once again do fire up for parts of New South Wales next Monday on the fourth of November, in similar fashion to what's actually expected into Queensland. That basically does it for thunderstorms. This forecast. 
forecast. I'm going to give a tropical weather update now before we talk about the heat wave conditions expected to develop across WA. You can see some warm temp, uh, some not warm temperature, some high rainfall accumulations rather are expected now over the next 10 days. Good falls possible up in the Cape York Peninsula, north of uh, Queensland, uh, around that Lockhart River sort of area. Some good falls are possible there. We're talking up towards 70 millimetres an hour as that monsoon trough slowly builds itself up. Showers also pretty persistent across parts of the Daintree River as well and into the Daintree Rainforest. Casarico still have to wait another week or so to get that rainfall really firing up there. But that monsoon trough does continue to head further south. You can see rainfall piping down now in Papua New Guinea and now expected to rise across parts of the Northern Territory and into WA. And it won't be long until Queensland gets their uh, share of the rainfall as well. They're expecting some good rainfall into the early parts of November, but we will keep a close eye on things up there. Some days that really stick out for me to look to be into the uh, early parts of next week, Wednesday and into Thursday, we're expecting some storms to fire up across the Northern Territory and parts of WA. And some of these storms could be pretty strong indeed. Warm temperatures means that we're going to be seeing a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity across the top end of the Northern Territory into the Kakadu area. And then outside of Catherine and Jeburu as well, we'll be seeing a couple of uh, showers and thunderstorms thunderstorms develop there Thursday night. Friday will be a little bit quieter, but still storms pretty persistent across parts of WA and into the Northern Territory. Showers and storms continuing into the weekend as well, and specifically for far Northern Queensland as well, we're seeing some showers this weekend, or showers and storms on Friday and Saturday next weekend, and some showers also expected for next Thursday. So we will keep a close eye on things up in far Northern Queensland, but the rainfall there not really enough to be talking about, especially around the Cairns area where we do kind of need about 200 millimetres of rainfall in a 24 hour period to start having flood concerns up there so when we're talking about 50 millimeters over a 10 day period it really is a drop in the ocean for those locations now I want to give a, uh, a heat wave uh, update for parts of Western Australia. We do have some warm temperatures expected to develop along a uh, west coast trough that's going to be extending down. You guessed it, the west coast. We're expecting some very warm temperatures to begin to materialise, especially around the Perth area and into the southwest and the Great Southern for the early parts of next week. You can see Monday we're expecting a warm top of 32 for Perth. Tuesday it's going to be warmer still with a warm top of 35 expected there. Temperatures continuing to rise through Wednesday and Thursday as well, especially into the, nor the northern parts of uh, the wheat belt, we're expecting temperatures to go into the high 30s and even into the low 40s once you get up towards the Murchison and into the Gascoigne region. Temperatures going into the early 40s there for the first time this summer. Temperatures continuing to rise. It looks like Thursday is going to be the hot day with temperatures expected to rise up towards 34 on this forecast with the Bureau of Meteorology suggesting up towards 38, I believe, or 37, I believe, for Perth on Thursday. It's going to be very warm indeed to close out October. The Axis G3 as well calling for 40 degree days to extend further inland from Perth with York expecting 40 40 degrees, Jinjin expecting 41 and up towards Morawa and Murchison 42 and 43 respectively. Very warm indeed. The Eastern Relief is a little bit uh, weaker on the temperature forecast this time there a little bit more reserved for this uh, heat, which is going to be further up into the wheat belt and even in towards the Gascoigne and the Murchison region. We're expecting the heat to remain there by the Eastern Air forecast, but I reckon with this heat wave, it's going to be pretty widespread across parts of the Southwest, and it's certainly going to be the first taste of summer for Perth and some of its suburbs this uh, week uh, as these temperatures do start to rise. Warm temperatures as well expected to extend into the gold fields and also parts of the Murchison and the Gascoigne. You can see temperatures rising up towards 44 degrees to start November on Friday the 1st of November, some warm temperatures expected there. And even in towards the Pilbara and the Kimberley region as well, temperatures expected to go up in towards the mid 40s and then high 40s expected to round out next weekend with temperatures up towards 45, 46 degrees Celsius. Warm temperatures again on Sunday, 45 and 46 degrees Celsius. And Monday we're expecting temperatures to go 46 or 47 degrees Celsius for locations outside of 80 Mile Beach, Marble Bar and Telfer. Very warm indeed even for this time of the year. Those temperatures are still a lot above average. Around Perth, we're expecting daytime temperatures, especially Wednesday and Thursday, to be around sort of that 8 to 14 degrees Celsius above average, depending on whereabouts you are in Perth. Warm temperatures also extending in towards the Northern Territory and parts of South Australia as well. And even into Queensland, temperatures expected to rise into next week with a daytime maximum up towards 45 outside of Birdsville. And that's what's going to be promoting those thunderstorms that we are expecting to uh, cause us a few problems, I'd say Monday and Tuesday, the 4th and the 5th of November. That's definitely more of a heads up than it is an actual forecast. They're more likely not to happen than they are to happen. But we will keep a very close eye on things because conditions look to be very favourable, especially for this time of the year across parts of southeastern Queensland 
Queensland into the south central parts of Queensland as well. But yeah, it's been a long-winded forecast update. Once again, we've got through a lot of detail. It's also the second attempt recording this video. I forgot to press the record button on the first one, so uh, you can probably tell through my voice it's really deteriorated now. I've been talking for about uh, half an hour or slightly longer than that. So again, it's been a bit of a hassle this video, but I will get it out and I hopefully have got it out on time. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, especially about the Queensland weather forecast as well and what's actually expected there, uh, if I've left anything unanswered, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. It's very important that people do stay safe in severe thunderstorms. But much like the other thunderstorm event that we had the last couple of days, yes, severe thunderstorms are on the forecast, but they're very likely, very, very likely to not cause significant damage or harm to lives and property. So again, uh, dangerous is a little bit of a stretch at this time to call these thunderstorms, and dangerous was always a stretch to call the other severe thunderstorms that impacted Queensland. But severe thunderstorms are severe thunderstorms. They can cause flooding, they can cause property damage, so it's certainly worth talking about, and it's certainly worth preparing for the worst for those severe thunderstorms. But yeah, that's all that I have time for today. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and I could not run this show without them, so thank you so much to all of them. That is all for me, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.